Hi, I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise. Welcome to my sewing room. I'm really glad that you're joining me today. I want to talk to you about how to add pockets to your jean quilts. Now they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, both the quilts and the pockets, as well as the jeans. So sometimes it can be a lot to manage and figure out just how to work it to the best advantage. I have some techniques that I want to share with you that I use. I've made quite a few blue jean quilts and adding the pockets is the fun part. It's sort of that finishing touch, the icing on the cake, so to speak. Let's get started. You can follow along and then I'm anxious to see what you come up with. Be sure and send me pictures of your finished jean quilts. Let's talk about adding pockets to your blue jeans. There's a lot of options. There's a lot of ways you can do it but I want to show you a couple key things that I do. First though, let me tell you how to touch up a, a block. These are all my nice clean blocks that I cut and they're in great shape, there's no problems, but generally you'll come across a few. Some you can't salvage, but this one, for example, I put an extra block on the back and I use the darning stitch. Um, the darning stitch, I think you can see, has three or four stitches that goes in a zigzag pattern. And that works really well for something like this. If you just do straight lines back and forth, you're going to create creases and your needle is piercing all those threads in that same section and you're more apt to get a tear. Um, same thing here. Now this what I did is I just put a strip down the side and I sewed it here and I sewed it along where the seam allowance will be to hold everything together. So you'll find what works for you, and then you'll, you'll have block, plenty of blocks. Now, when you get the dirty ones, these are the great places to put your pockets. So let's talk a little bit about pockets. Actually, this is one option. I have this little pocket here. And it's a small piece that was cut and it was left over. If you remember, um, I think they still make them, the carpenter jeans. These are the side pockets and then they'd have the little pencil or ruler pocket. Now, if you've got a corner like this and you can set a pocket over, I'd probably overlap it so we can get some fraying there. But we have enough fabric so we can actually do it like this. You just need to decide what, what your preferences are. This was actually a pocket top, so the top doesn't need to be sewn down. I would sew this at the half inch where the seam allowance would be, this at the half inch where the seam allowance will be, and quite frankly, I'm just going to go to half inch down here and let this fray. Alternatively, you can sew it over like this, you can sew it over like this, um, whatever your preferences are. But one thing to remember when you're sewing pockets, these folded seams are really thick. You're not going to do any sewing on a jean quilt without a size 16 needle. Um, there's a link for those down below. The, the needles for regular quilting, size 11, 12, even 14s, are not going to be strong enough. They'll break, and the last thing you want are little bits of needles flying through the air, um, because that can be quite dangerous. Go ahead and think about where you want to place your pockets, how you want them. This is a jean or a uh, this is going to be a rag quilt, so I'm okay with the frayed edges. I'm just going to sew here and here, and then I have this fun little pocket in there. Now, if let's say, oh, that's the, those are kind of bad. <laughs> let's say I wanted to cover something in the center. I can do the same thing here. So you can place the pocket anywhere. That's what's nice about using the large rectangles. But let's talk a little bit about how to cut the pockets out. Now, you've got a couple different kinds of pockets. The front pockets often will have the double little coin pocket in there as well. And it can be kind of fun to cut the whole thing out here. Plus, you have the big patch pockets on the back. But again, the thing to think about are these thick seams. How are you going to sew through that? And unless you have a really strong machine, even a 16 needle might have trouble going through this. Plus you have the rivets. So there are times if you're going to sew right along the edge here, you may need to use a zipper foot. So keep that in mind as you're determining what you want to do with your pockets. Um, what I did, let me show you here. This is one way to do it and you can cut it right along 
the seam. So this was sewn from here to here. And so now you have plenty here for your rear patch pocket. And you have this piece. Now I would go ahead and sew through here and I would go this far and I would stop and then I'd come here and I'd come and do it because you don't want to try and sew around that rivet. Again, flying needles and that's really dangerous. And that's not going to go anywhere. So if you want to put this down, um, I think I showed on this one. Let me find the other pair. Here they are. If you want to sew this down, just um, your, what are these called? Belt loops. Uh, just trim your belt loop off and where it was sewn, just kind of rub it with your finger and you really don't even know it was there. And then you can cut this any width depending on the size of the block you want it to be on. And that gives you room to fold it over. Now this one, I sew or I cut it with a half inch seam allowance. So when you look at these two pieces together, there's a little more than an inch right here. So I could cut right down that center and get a half inch on each side. So that gives me the half inch that I need if I'm going to put this right along the edge um, where a seam is going to join or I can turn it under. Like I said, you can you can finish it any way you want. Um, it's a matter of your preference and what you want the finished look to be. Now the other situation you have are these placket pockets. Um, you know, this one had the patch pocket, which is pretty easy. You can just, you know, cut this off wherever and sew that down and you have access to that pocket. This one, on the other hand, not so easy. So what I would do here is I'm going to cut right across this very top. Let me show you. I'm going to actually cut this here and then see where this top stitching is. That's where the seam is to the uh, to finish this top edge. And then when I go to sew this down, I don't have that heavy heavy seam here. And when I sew this, I can clip and I'm going to get a frayed edge. So you would just need to, you know, get your seam ripper, just like this was done, go underneath here, and it's, you know, it's about a little half inch seam, and it can be kind of tight. So don't be afraid to, you know, poke that baby in there and see how it just pulls apart pretty easily. Um, and I I don't take these off the, uh, the jean, off the waistband, until I'm ready to use them. I just haven't found a place to store them. I probably just put them in a great big jar, but for right now I leave them intact and then when I'm ready to use them I'll go ahead um, and do something with them. But in the meantime I'm going to cut this piece here and I'll probably just take it all the way over to the zipper and then I can cut that uh, to whatever size I want. So we're going to cut this far and I saved these zippers too because these zippers are great to pull out and use for pouches. I mean, they're, they're sturdy, they're strong, they're, they look fun in a pouch like that. So now I have this, and I can put something like this, I can overlay it, um, I can go this direction. So there are a lot of different options. When I use the little pockets, what I oftentimes will do here is I will, from the back side, sew right along this outer edge because that way I'll, I'll have a clean pocket. Um, some of these, they, the pockets can be torn and you don't want to have those pieces, those threads hanging out your pockets of your finished quilt. So just turn this upside down, make sure everything's nice and flat and kind of baste it first, sew it down and make sure it's going to lie flat. Look at the front, make sure there's no wrinkles, and then come back and do a, you know, with a smaller stitch that'll hold it more securely. So that is going to work really well here. Now the patch pockets, one thing to keep in mind is that different size jeans have different size pockets. So a larger jean has a pretty wide pocket, and the smaller jeans, they're narrow. And this is going to make a difference on the size of your, 
your quilt block, how you're going to work with it. Now these blocks that I'm using, I'm cutting at 7 by 14, so they'll finish at 6 by 13. And this is just at 6 inches. So if I were to cut a 7 inch, I would just get that pocket inside the block. But on this one, not so much. I mean, this thing from up here, this is 7 inches wide. Now, you can be kind of creative here. And let's say how we want to do this. Let's take this and we'll just cut up this back seam. And if I can get there like this, and I'm just going to go right up off the top. Okay. Now, cut across the bottom. So my block is going to be seven inches. So I want to cut this at seven inches, which is about right here. So I'd be losing the bottom of the pocket. It'd be from here up. If I cut right along here, I'm going to get this little bit for my seam allowance, which is great, but it doesn't leave a lot of room to get into the pocket. So I prefer cutting it up above. And again, this is all about just making it fit and work. This I can put on a block. Let's say I've got this block that's kind of all messed up. And I can put it on like this. And then I just cut it off at the bottom. And so you still get the look of the pocket. You don't need to have that point. Now, if you had more intact here, a larger piece, you could use the top of that in one of your blocks, which is kind of fun to do. Um, here are some others. I already showed you an idea where this can just go on the edge. Here's a bottom of a pocket. It was really long. But this makes a really nice piece to add in somewhere, too. Again, either for wear or repair or to cover um, where something has been torn. Now, this is a really interesting one. But on the back, generally, when you sew the placket, this pocket should be flat. But whoever sewed it didn't get their pocket in the right place. Now, I can take that out and fix it. But if I do, I'm going to lose this effect because I don't have that thread. I'm not going to be able to replicate that. So instead, I would probably just kind of cut out this little pocket. And the reason I didn't just cut it with that in, in place is by sewing this down, I can cut this off and I have a fun little block. But then later, when I sew this down, I have a fun block. And this can go over a seam into somewhere else. Or, you know, you're almost collaging uh, crazy quilting here. So when you've got these pieces, think about what you can do creatively. And it just makes it far more interesting. I'm going to show you how this finished jean quilt with all, the per with all the pockets turned out. So give me just a moment to get that, please. This rag quilt is a beast. It weighs so much with all this denim, but I do want to show you. This is the first rag quilt I ever made, and I made it with lots of big pieces because these were huge jeans with all kinds of decorative elements that I wanted to include. Um, the back is mostly flannel. I had some denim. It just, whatever I had is what I used. This is when I was living on an island and we didn't have fabric stores, so you, you did with what you had. So on this one, um, I just used a whole front. So the zipper's there, it works, it opens up. I sewed a little bit so that um, you can't get all the way in the quilt, or more importantly, the quilt can't come out from the inside. No batting, just flannel and jeans. And so this pocket, see how this has a little tear here? I didn't worry about that because there's like three layers of fabric and, and it's not going to go anywhere. And this I made when my, my son was in uh, high school and he's now married with two children. His oldest just turned 10. And they use this as their picnic quilt. Um, it's outside. It gets washed all the time. It gets beaten up. And, and it's held up so well. And so here's, here's a pocket. I just cut the whole thing out. And see how I use the bottom edge of the pocket on top of another piece of denim. You can't really see the other denim under there. But I did double up a lot of pieces. And 
you know, these are fun, the great big pockets. These are the ones I talked about earlier you can cut in half, um, depending on what you want, or use whole. Of course, you could have rivets. And here's a waistband. Waistbands are kind of fun to put in there if they have a label. And what else do we have? Um, small pieces, and you can see there's, there's another piece underneath there. I didn't sew it together. Um, here's some kind of, what do they call, placket pockets. Um, but everything, everything works. Um, I didn't sew things down. So that's this. Oh, and yeah, this is, and then where we had fun little doodads, I, I'd like to include those. You just have to be really careful when you're sewing that you don't get caught up with those kinds of pieces. So here's another place where there's a zipper. And when the kids were little, it's kind of a fun, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a, a busy quilt, I guess you could call it, a fidget quilt because there's a lot to touch and, and a lot to play with. But, you know, it, it was just, I pieced it all together, whatever worked. So you don't have to be precise. There are no specific rules. You do what works for you. Now, there is one other quilt I want to show you here, the one that's actually in this post. If you've seen this blog post, um, you know that this is a single layer denim. There's no backing to it, so it makes it nice and lightweight. And I added borders. Here's a partial pocket right here. Um, when I make these rectangular quilts, the reason behind it is, see how these seams are offset? You lose all that bulk. When you have these two seams lined up in the same place, you get a big knot, and it's bulky, and, and it's messy, and it's tough to deal with both sewing and clipping. By putting a small block every other row you're offsetting offsetting your seams and that just makes it so much easier to go together now here's where i did a patch this one was you know in need of repair you can see here that i doubled up and then i put this block on here and i just sewed it and i let it rag out around the edge and there should be another pocket. Here we go. Now this one's facing the other direction. So where this one is up, this one is down. You know, that's another thing to think about is decide is, is your quilt going to have an up and a down or can they go every which way? And I just put them in the way they fit. Now this one, see where this is cut off? The pocket probably came to here, but I was doing a smaller block, my offset block, so I had to cut part of it off. Most of the pockets on this quilt are on the outside edge. It just seemed to work better that way. And this is just a piece that was added on to cover up. And let's see if there's anything else. Here we go. Here's another pocket here. And one other thing is about rivets. This one doesn't have a rivet, but again, be very, very careful if your uh, pockets have rivets on them. But see how easy this all goes together? And, of course, I love doing borders and uh, kind of a lattice between the blocks. It just adds a lot of interest. This is going to give you some ideas to work with. Think about where you're going to put your pockets, how you want to place them. Don't go into a cutting frenzy first thing and cut all your pockets out because you don't know just what you're going to do with them. And I'm telling you from experience, I had a lot of pockets that were pre-cut. And they ended up not quite fitting or not being what I want. And I changed my mind and I changed my style over time. Keep in mind, there's a lot you can do. Don't, uh, don't get caught up in uh, just one thing. Be creative and get inspired because that's where the great ideas come from. So I hope you enjoy this. It's been a pleasure showing these quilts to you. They were a lot of fun to make. And I hope you have a lot of fun making your own. Have a wonderful day.